Hey, Mr. Bices here, and in this video, I'm going to talk about determining if two events are independent using probabilities and using a formula. So let's take a look at what I have here. Now let's go back and think about uh, the multiplication rule. The multiplication rule, if you remember, is that P of A and B is equal to the probability of A times the probability of B if A and B are independent. Right? So how do you tell if they are independent? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to use our idea of conditional probabilities to help us deal with that. So if we go back, we know that the, the probability of B given A is equal to the probability of A and B happening divided by the probability of A occurring. Right? That's the formula that we were given uh, earlier in the last video and in class about the conditional probabilities. So here's what I'm going to do. Assuming that A and B are independent, I'm going to make a little substitution. I'm going to substitute this in here. All right, so that's going to give me P of A times probability of B divided by the probability of A. Okay, given that A and B are, this is if A and B are independent, well, notice here that the probabilities of A simplify out. So really what I'm given here is that the probability of B given A is equal to the probability of B if A and B are independent. Basically what I'm saying is the probability of B happening, the event B happening, is going to be the same regardless of the condition of A occurring. Right? So that means it's independent of A. It happens regardless of A being regardless of whether or not A happens or not, um, there's, that is no longer a condition for it to be a probability. So we're going we're gonna to use this idea here, this formula here, as how we determine if A and B are independent. Okay. So you might have heard people walking past. So here's what I'm going to do, folks. I am going to um, take my take this and put it on a new page because uh, I think it'll be a little easier to see here. All right, so let's take a look at this example. This is number 22 from the BVD book. And I'm going to make a Venn diagram. And this is going to be um, retirement plan, health insurance, I know that the they have both is going to be 49%, which means that the health insurance is going to be 19%, and this is going to be 7%. Let's make our little box here for the universe. And then this is going to be 25% because I have to add these up and subtract by 100 to get that. Okay, so now, and, and if you don't know how to make this Venn diagram, go look at my other video. On the diagrams, I'll show you how to do these. Okay, so what's the probability that he has neither health insurance nor retirement plan? We'll figure that out, it's 0.25. What's the probability that he has health insurance if he has a retirement plan? Well, that's a conditional probability. Um, what's the probability he has health insurance given that he has a retirement plan? So that's going to be the probability that he has health insurance and a retirement plan divided by the probability that he has health insurance. Okay. Oh, no, that's wrong. P, sorry. Divided by So it's always, it's it's P of B given A, right? And it's always divided by this one. Okay, it's always divided by A. All right, so what are those probabilities? The probability that they get both is 0.49. And the probability of just having um, a, retire <clears throat> a retirement plan is 0.56. All right, so we do that in our calculator. Let's pull the calculator up. What did I say? 0.49 divided by 
So there we go. So this is our probability for B. Now, our having health insurance and a retirement plan independent events. So what we're looking at <clears throat> is, is the probability of having health insurance, given you get a retirement plan, equal to the probability of just having health insurance. Well, the probability of just having health insurance is, four, is 0.49 and 0.19, which is 68%. So this is 0.68. This, this conditional is 0.875. I found that out from this problem here. So if this is not equal to this, it tells us that these two are not independent. Had those two probabilities been equal, then we would have said that the two events are independent. Okay. All right. So that's it. That is an example of how we would do, uh, how we would determine the two Two events are independent using our formula for independence using conditional probabilities. See you later. Bye.